Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today. Happy Saturday. Hope all of you are having a phenomenal weekend. I know I am because I finally got the mop off my head. Feeling pretty good. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, as per usual, we've got some Xbox news to talk about today. Backwards compatible rumors. We've been looking for them. And we got some to finally go over with Xbox's anniversary approaching. Is it possible that we see a new list of original Xbox and 360 games be put on the backwards compat list? We shall see. We got a rumor to talk about there. On top of that, Xbox mini fridge. It's real. We're going to talk about the right to repair. And last, but certainly not least, hardware sales in Japan. We got the numbers. And now we can finally go over them and talk about where Xbox is trending in Japan because beneath the full number is an interesting stat I found that I think is very telling for how Xbox's growth in Japan will go. So if you're new here and you're looking for more Xbox news, information, reviews, previews, pretty much everything gaming because God forbid I pick a path, then ladies and gentlemen, consider subscribing. With that, let's talk about back compat rumors. I know that's what most of you are here for. So this came from Special Nick. It started off at the beginning of this year saying, so if you're like me, You've been hoping the backwards compatibility program isn't done. Good news, it's not. We should be getting a new batch later this year. Mix of OG and 360. I like that this was happening back in January when Nick said this. Nick is an insider who has provided a ton of information in the past, tons of leaks, rumors. In fact, he sparked a rumor for a brand new Sly Cooper game. So I'm putting a lot of my faith here in Nick. I trust Nick. We've talked before with that. Him saying it back in January to me gives a little bit more confidence because as we've gotten closer to the anniversary, a lot of speculation has ramped up and people are expecting new backwards compatible titles. So seeing that he was putting that out there way back at the beginning of the year makes a lot more sense to me that he may have actually heard something. With that, he had a follow-up tweet earlier this month. Here's what he had to say. Do you think it's possible to have a large drop of OG, Xbox, and 360 games on November 15th for the 20th year anniversary? Nick says, that's what I'd be expecting. I was originally told back in January that a drop would happen later in the year. Having them on the anniversary would make the most sense. I don't think the list will be overly big, though. Right, so we've seen Xbox's back compat program continue on in a new way. That is the evolution of FPS boost, where we're seeing all these Xbox One games, which people are still buying, still playing, running at a better frame rate on Xbox. And they've quieted down that part of the program for some time now, where I think we are gonna get a slew of announcements through FPS Boost to even additions to the back compat list. This is something that they haven't done since I believe it was 2019. It's been a very long time since we've seen additions to the back compat library. Why is that? I think it's as simple as, is it efficient use of Microsoft and Xbox's time? If people are excited about it, that's one thing, but are they actually playing these games that are getting updated? And is it generating sales for those games? You have to remember, they have to operate as business and use their resources in the most wise manner. So while I know Xbox is committed to back combat and we want them to keep going with that, adding more games to the list, I have a laundry list of them as I think everyone does. I do hope this rumor ends up being true. And from the perspective of looking at backwards compatibility and when they would announce it, there truly is no better time than the anniversary. A day where Xbox gets to celebrate, hey, look at our history, and we've added some games to celebrate said history from the original Xbox to the 360. Now, I wouldn't put your expectations up in the sky. Yeah, we're going to get dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of games, but I think a few could be added to the list. This doesn't mean that that niche pick that you've been thinking of for a while may get tossed in there, although, hey, fingers crossed my death row finally makes it my favorite og xbox game of all time if they bring that back i'll be screeching in a video for that alone but there's tons of them we could go on the naruto ubisoft games operation darkness there's weirdo missions like max pain 3 that i think finally needs to be added there are so many that are still missing and so i think this is going to be a day where they announce a ton of that stuff and Again, what better time to do it than the anniversary? So that's what I'm personally expecting. If they don't do that, I don't know what else they're going to announce. We have talked about that in previous videos where what will happen on the anniversary? Will it be something along the lines of a studio acquisition announcement? No, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't know if that's a, a real true way to celebrate your heritage by announcing an addition. It's about your history, your past. And with them announcing all the equipment beforehand like the new controller the new headset at the beginning of october i think they have a lot planned for us in november so time 
shall tell. But again, rumors are swirling around that new back compact games are heading to Xbox, and I will be so happy to finally see that. So what do you want to see them add to Xbox back compact? Fire away in the comments. Let's continue on to story number two. That's about Xbox in Japan. So Famitsu has posted some numbers on the sales for hardware with Xbox in Japan. And here we can see the Switch is doing continuously well at a total of 17 million units, which is insane. But you go down a little bit and you see that Xbox Series X has a total of 64,284 units sold and Series S has a total of 38,307 sold. With the 527 Xbox Series X units sold and Xbox Series S units being 2,920 units, this is all recent numbers. And what's happened is now they have combined to pass 100,000 units. This is faster than the Xbox One, which needed 50 months to hit 100K. So Xbox is having momentum and they are becoming more appealing in Japan. It's just obviously not gangbusters level numbers where they are doing like what playstation did where if you look at their numbers in japan they're about to hit a million total playstation 5 so that is clearly the favored console but what i wanted to note here that was interesting beneath these numbers is the performance of the series s is doing multiple times better than the series x and one thing that we said often on this channel is that it's very well possible the key to xbox's growth in japan is the cloud that digital nature not only that but cheap buy-in on the series s of course with the xbox all access program if it's supported there that makes it an easy buy-in but i really think the cloud is the key because that digital future will get people playing on their phones signing up to game pass so i think it's going to be a slow roll and what will be likely a more telling number multiple years from now is instead of consoles sold which i think will always be important don't get me wrong is game pass subscribers per region. I think especially for Japan, that's going to be very telling if these numbers stay consistent and we continue to see the digital series as favored. I think that will continue to be an important factor moving forward because again, with xCloud, Game Pass, the accessibility of that library there being anywhere and being able to stream your games. And of course, handheld gaming being so popular in Japan, you have to imagine these can all meet up together. And I think certain metrics will be more telling than others, but I digress. Good to see them growing in Japan. Despite all that, a lot of people have been really thrilled about this. And again, I must insist, Xbox's support in Japan to me has been mostly performative. I look back at the addition of Scarlet Nexus and I, the Somnium Files, the Game Pass, and I'm like, okay, cool. Like you guys are getting these old games. Again, Like we're, we're kind of repeating history here. Let's get some new stuff, new blood. They are doing partnerships in Japan, so that's good. But they eventually need to make the dive into the deep end to make that number multiply by 10. How they do it will be very interesting, but it's slow, steady growth. They're doing better than historically they have before. That's good to see, but also, let's be honest, the Xbox One era just completely sucked. I don't know many people who were enjoying that era of Xbox. There was so much wrong with it. There were a couple good games like Ori and Sunset Overdrive immediately come to mind that came out of there. It wasn't all bad, but there was it was pretty much a stained era for Xbox that really damaged them for a while. So yeah, of course they're gonna do better <laughs> the Xbox One era, in my eyes, I'm not too surprised. So I think there's still work to be done here, but it's encouraging to see that people are catching on that Xbox is doing better. All right, let's move on to Right to Repair. This article comes from Video Games Chronicles. It's titled, Microsoft is considering allowing Xbox owners to repair their own consoles. You may see this headline and go, well, what's the big deal? Who, who cares about any of this? I felt the same way because I saw people making videos about it, talking about it on Twitter. I went, okay, you can repair your console. Good. Weren't we always doing that? We have like YouTubers like Spawnwave who are cracking open all the electronics. I'm thinking to myself, well, isn't this a pretty popular thing for folks to do? But there's a lot more to it. So just stay patient. Hear us out. Let's do this. Grist reports that Microsoft has now reached an agreement with As You So, a nonprofit investor group who filed a shareholder resolution in June asking Microsoft to study the, quote, environmental and social benefits, end quote, of making it easier to repair devices. Microsoft has agreed to hire an independent consultant to study the benefits of giving consumers more access to parts and repair documentation, including whether this will reduce carbon emissions and waste, which is great to hear. Microsoft will not make this study public because it may contain trade secrets and other proprietary information, but it will post a public summary of its findings by the start of May 
2022. As long as these findings show there are benefits to letting people repair their own products, Microsoft has agreed that it will make new parts and documentation available beyond its authorized repair network by the end of 2022 and will launch new initiatives to help with local repairs. So I had to do a little bit of research on this topic because when I was reading about it, again, I thought, well, aren't people already repairing their own stuff? They are, but it's that these companies aren't providing the spare parts, the documentation required to do it on your own. And typically you'll have to send the console in or send whatever device in, have them fix it. Sometimes it costs you extra money. Sometimes it takes a while. This is a quicker way to do it, especially if you know how to do it, where you don't have to wait for them to do it and you will have the official parts to do so. This is actually a lot more significant and will play a big factor moving forward for Xbox when it comes to people like myself and others who are enthusiasts, who I'm even, believe it or not, familiarizing myself with the tech enough to start cracking open some devices. And I think if you can do that, save yourself a couple of bucks and you have the official documentation to do so. It makes sense, especially with Xbox, who's taking more of a PC step forward. And we talked about at the beginning of the Series X and PS5 console generation, where these consoles are going to function more and more like PCs as time goes on, we've seen people like replacing SSDs and adding all this different functionality to their consoles. So I think it's just a natural step in that direction. So very good to see. Last, certainly not least, but definitely not the headline of this news update. The Xbox Series mini fridge is real. So there was a competition with the battle of the brands on Twitter. Xbox was facing off against, I think it was Skittles. Shout out to my sour Skittles, by the way. And Aaron Greenberg said, hey, you get us to win, we'll give you the mini fridge by the end of the year. I thought to myself, how can you swing that into motion so fast and just make a call right there? They won, and now they're delivering, as we can see here, Xbox Series X mini fridge. Pre-order October 19th. In the first wave of production, the Xbox mini fridge will be available at Target and on Target.com for $99, our exclusive retailer in the U.S. Fans in Canada will also be able to purchase online via Target.com. Additionally, for fans in Europe, the Xbox mini fridge will be available from Game in the U.K. for $89.99 and fans in France. Germany, Italy, Ireland, Spain, Netherlands, and Poland can grab their own at GameStop, EU, Micromania, and Twink. We're working to bring Xbox Mini Fridge to as many fans as possible and will continue to expand regional availability in 2022, pending regularity approvals and restrictions by market. So yeah, 100 bucks for a mini fridge. I used to have the Nuka-Cola mini fridge in my bedroom it ended up breaking after about two years which sucked because that thing was awesome since then i've been on the hunt for a gamer level mini fridge this looks like it's it i love that they're actually going through with it bringing the meme to life it's great marketing they had the giant xbox series x fridge that was actually a real one now we've got the mini fridge for the series x so Good luck. We're, we're definitely going to see people scalp this mini fridge. I can almost guarantee it. So have fun trying to pre-order it. I don't really have space for it currently as much as I do want one in my room, but my room's already cramped enough. So I'll just be watching as the people on the internet lose their mind over a refrigerator and I continue on with my life. So with that, that's all the Xbox news I've got for you in today's video. Again, hope you all enjoyed and have a great rest of your weekend. Let me know what you think of all of this in the comments down below from the back compat rumors to right to repair Japan numbers and of course the mini fridge. And with that, I'll talk with all of you very soon. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. And a big thank you to all the patrons, all the members who continue to support the hell out of the content here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.